name is Laura Trotter. Clary Doyle. Bailey Roten. Mary Countryman, and we are sophomores at Duchenne Academy. Stop stalling! I'd like to issue a trigger warning for suicide, eating disorders, and general mental health. This is our group piece, Tragedy Never Dies. All motion must cease. But I, sissy for some condemned to push this rock up the mountain till my face wrinkles and creases. This repetitive struggle breeds meaningless dissatisfaction. And although I act my discontent as an action's reaction, life is the rock and suicide is the hard place. My tolls could be placated by letting the rock roll over my existence, but my fear of relinquishing life breeds death's resistance. The stars whisper of my broken heart's need to feel ease, but life stops for no one. Sissy Fuss was climbing, but Homer never said he was alone. In the grand scheme of things, we haven't made a dent in pushing through our problems. If these dilemmas are the rock, then, then we are fighting a losing battle. battle. Greek mythology taught in high schools for eternity has incidentally become a, a story, story of, of modernity. modernity. Roses are red, violets are blue, and the narcissist flower has the loveliest hue, though undistracted by its glory. I was stolen into darkness and by death, because to me, eating a pomegranate seed was like a dagger to my breast. Since, Since when did consuming food mean that food would consume me? I'm just another girl with an eating disorder. Piously fasting on a cosmopolitan diet became my religious order. Persephone wasn't the only one who couldn't eat the tempting foods within the garden. Forbidden fruit is 20th century jargon because no food tastes as good as skinny feels. And if it feeds my sanity, I'd gladly skip a couple meals. I am Demeter, whom my gluttonous father Kronos consumed. My life was what he gave me, and my life was what he assumed. My dad was a boy with an unimpressive existence. He devoured, he devoured my life, swallowing my experience. Because all he ever does is push me to take on more pressure till my exhausted arms can't lift the weight, and I'm just waiting until I'll crack. Because I'm not coal, and I'll never become a diamond. My dad's always telling me what he wants me to do, so how do I tell him? I love to hear him, but not in my head, too. They say don't, don't bite the hand that feeds you, but sometimes you got to bite back. At the hungry parents who prepare your life like a chicken dinner. And when you're on that plate, you don't feel like a winner winner. I wasn't the perfectly molded model, rather made up of molten men. <clears throat> when you try to put fire into a mold, all the result is burnt plastic. I am Hephaestus, a disfigured baby cast off a mountain. My mother didn't bother preserving skin, skin that was never beautiful. And flame is a comforting burn after the spurn of my mother. So I play in the fire. My sandbox, sandbox is full of ash. These burns on my body cannot be helped by a graft because my baby smooth skin came out a lot more like leather. I'm a teenager cast aside by the wolves that raised me, by the society that decided they couldn't appraise me because I wasn't beautiful. And, and if beauty is pain, then ugly is more painful. These fleeting innovations don't work, these timeless sensations. Clearly, 2,000 years cannot separate us from these same traumas. No wonder we're always assigned to read Greek dramas. And I don't think they intend for us to snap our fingers in affirmation as we go. But Homer's Iliad reminds me a lot of my journal at home. Suicide. An eating disorder. Parental pressure. And unrealistic expectations aside. It's tragic that these problems still survive. Because although every tragic hero met their demise, it seems that tragedy will always rule our lives. <laughs> This way to that way, we have a 9.8.